The LA Clippers played a team on Monday night at the Pfizer Forum that if you haven't been watching lately, you would not recognize because it did not look like the Milwaukee Bucks that we saw for most of the first half of this season. And also Giannis Antetokounmpo didn't play. You may have heard of him. And yet the Bucks come out with a 113-106 win the night after the Clippers have arguably the best win of their season. Camille Davis from Locked on Bucks joins me now. And, and Camille, this was gritty. It was scrappy. It was everything that we call Pat Beverly. Um, and he was, of course, a big part of this one. Six in a row now for the Bucks out of the All-Star break. What is the difference for them right now? you're starting to see the process pay off what wins. Like we were seeing the tie starting to change once Doc River came in at the helm. We saw the Bucks defense improving. We did see the offense taking a step back, but again, you could see parts of why, like they lost Chris Middleton in the Phoenix game. Dane missed a few games. Brooke missed a few games. So like they were trying to get their footing offensively, but the defense has been the story. That's been the leading story as to why the Bucks have looked good. And you saw the, 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 the edges of it coming into focus before for the all-star break and after the break the players just mentioned like hey we understand we only have 25 26 games left at this point we need to turn it up we need to turn it on like there is not much time left for us um and they knew the assignment things were very clear to them at this time and you're seeing it pay off you're seeing them play with urgency with effort it's fun bucks basketball again like <laughs> i have a smile on my face hearing you talk about it see that's what i mean like tonight's win just show like this is what bucks fans have been missing like a lot of the season fans have felt a little joyless watching yeah. the team at times because of the expectations on this team and now to see them starting to click and get this type of gutsy win without Chris, without Giannis against a Clippers team that's pretty much healthy outside of Russell Westbrook. And they pulled it together. It was looking bleak. Uh, in the first half, they had me. I'm not going to lie. It was looking bleak <laughs> at certain points. Uh, but what a big fourth quarter comeback for this Milwaukee Bucks team. The fact that they outscored the Clippers 40-25 to 25 yeah. in the fourth, the defense stepped up and they were able to convert some shots along the way as well. Yeah, something that really stood out to me, Camille, as I was watching this was I cannot remember a Bucks game, a meaningful one, where they played this much zone. Yeah. And there have been games this season where we've seen them spend seemingly the whole game switching everything, which was not a thing that they did under Mike Budenholzer. Now, later in, in the Bud tenure, like he would make some changes. We knew with Drew Holiday, they would do some different. This is the most diverse group of defenses I can remember seeing them play. And to have it done this quickly – I, I, I don't I don't know what else to say about what Doc Rivers has done. Like, what is what are you seeing there? Because it 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 is remarkable to me. You saw them doing these things under Griffin as well. They just weren't being executed uh, the same way. Griff yeah. ran a lot of zone. Griff ran a lot of switches. He wanted to have an aggressive defense, but the Bucks defense under Adrian Griffin, unfortunately, uh, wasn't creating many turnovers, not many deflections, wasn't really pressuring the ball that well. And with Doc Rivers coming in, he established some base guidelines for the team hmm. pretty much going to guys saying that you can do this and this will not happen in the offense <laughs> or in the defense so he mentioned which sticks into my mind he talked about the fact that he was seeing Damian Lillard and guys above the three-point line coming in and crashing trying to get defensive boards and he's like you're already out of the play like just get back like I'm not trying to see Dame chasing rebounds like if it bounces your way cool but otherwise get back um, and him just establishing the baseline making the Bucks talk. The communication is a large piece of that. And when you see them on defense, they look so much more connected um, in large part because they're all talking to one another. They know where each other should be um, and they're speaking confidently and they're trusting in one another as well along the way. Like cutting down the transition defense points uh, for the other team has been big. Transition defense has gotten so much better for the Bucks. Points in the paint, they're allowing less there, like rebounding better. Like they're just playing more sound and fundamental ball right now. And we've gone this far and haven't even mentioned Damian Lillard had 41 in this one. Now, no Giannis, no Chris, but this is the version of Damian Lillard that that we saw in Portland last year. And this is the version of Damian Lillard that the Bucs thought that they were getting when they traded Drew Holiday for him. So why do you why do you think we haven't seen that? And and what do you think the chances are that we can see this a little bit more often in the second half or as we close? We're, we're past the second half now. 
yeah, in this final third of the season, final quarter of the season, um, honestly, it's just comfort. That's something that Doc came in as well as an emphasis point for him, making sure that Damian Lillard felt comfortable in this mm-hmm. offense. Um, and Dame is starting to get that. And you're starting to see the guys around Dame as well understand what their roles are. Bobby Portis made note of that, saying we all know what our roles are. They're very clearly defined right now. Um, and within that, we can play to our strengths, knowing exactly what's expected of us. And with Dame, he's being more aggressive. He's hearing from his teammates. We need you to do this. We need you to go shoot these 40 footers. We need you to lead the way. Pat Bev made a point saying, hey, come playoff time. Like you're going to be getting up 25 shots a game. And there might be some bench guys that look and say like, hey, you going G ball. But the reality of it is this is how it should go. Your star players get the touches. Stay up to date all year on the Milwaukee Bucks by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Bucks on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. 